Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles, a business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions. Today on the Visionary Chronicles, we're going to talk about innovation, but in a different context than we've talked about before. It isn't a context that says, hey, we already have something in place that allows us to be best in class, whether it be a service, product, technology, whatever it happens to be. Many times I get asked, uh, how do we start building an innovation platform? So I'd like to talk about today is this thing we call the innovation strategy. Yes, it's truly a strategy of how you implement and execute innovation, disruption, whatever it may be. Those are two tiers. And the pinnacle of that obviously is disruption. It's effectively innovation on steroids. So what we want to look at today is, you know, how do we effectively implement an innovation driven culture? And all the brands that I've worked with over the years, many of these global iconic brands, many of you have seen and heard of out there, Adidas, Nike, Oakley, whatever it happens to be, I was fortunate to have worked with these, not only these brands, but interestingly enough, these different categories and these different cultures. It was interesting, every brand that I was with, each, although within the CPG industry, had a different culture about them. They had a different attitude. They had a different positioning on how they were to execute their product strategy in the marketplace. And as a result of that, what happens behind the scenes is this innovation strategy of what do we do to disrupt our category to be best in breed, best in class when we put products into the marketplace. So there's anticipation of what is the next eyewear piece from Oakley? What's the anticipation of the next footwear from Nike or Adidas, whatever it happens to be? There's this culture, this ingrained culture inside of an innovation driven brand that commodity brands don't have. And by design, they don't have it because they don't have a strategy around innovation, which is driven by an earned right through a culture. So again, many times when I work with companies, whether for them or with them, um, that is a big question they always ask me is, you know, I get out, where do we start with this innovation strategy? And I always tell them that, you know, it's an earned right. And what I say is innovation is an ingrained culture phenomenon. And, you know, when I say phenomenon, it's something that is tangible, that is built into the culture of a brand, something you can see and feel inside of those four walls of a brand. Think of brands where you get that feeling, you know, whether opening a package from Apple or ordering something online from Patagonia or whatever your taste is or whatever your passion is, that lifestyle passion around the product that you purchase. And obviously there's a reason that you do that and brands know that and brands earn that right to be able to build this innovation culture around a strategy that's built from a vision that starts from the top. The leader of the company drives that vision. And unless you have that commitment from the top, the ability for you to drive an innovation strategy that also allows you to disrupt your category is not going to happen because there's no commitment from the top. So, you know, that's why I say it's something that's earned, but obviously it starts from the top. And the other thing that happens with an innovation strategy, and we'll talk about the points, the most important points and priorities that I've seen with brands and companies I've been with, as well as working with Liquid Mind, when we put this strategy plan together, is, again, something that's earned, but it's also something that's committed to throughout the company from top to bottom. Everybody takes pride in the product. Everybody takes pride in the culture. So effectively what that does is it builds an external community that also embraces what you're doing internally. So when you look at this commitment throughout the company, it's protected by those artists, those creators whose sole intent is to protect what I call the soul of the brand. 
you know, when you look at great companies, they're very protective of the process. They're very protective of the creation of the product through that process. And you look at companies like Apple, there's a reason that when they build and develop products and it's something that's going to be released, whether a next generation or a new breakthrough or a disruptive technology or product that they have, there's a reason they protect it. They protect it because it's driven through their culture that you protect the artists and the creators, the ones who have built this product and put their heart and soul into it, but also understand that what they're creating is the soul of the brand and the company and everybody embraces it. So what's cool about that process is that from top to bottom, you start with a vision. Then secondly, you start with having best in class, best in breed in everything you do in your category. And when you look at the ultimate goal of disrupting in your category, that's the pinnacle of where you want to be in being able to leapfrog over your competition. So being an innovation platform is earned. Again, I go back to the initial question. Where does a company start? And again, first it starts at the top with someone who has a vision, a vision to be best in class, best of breed. And in order to attain this status, you're forced to innovate. You're forced to have a strategy that day in and day out, your artists, your creators, those that are the soul of the brand are forced to innovate, to disrupt the status quo of what your competitors are doing. And when you look at many times companies that are protective of the at risk of innovative, meaning that they don't want to take a risk, meaning they don't understand in order to innovate, you have to take risks. You have to embrace failure. So very few companies are comfortable doing that. And by design, they're not innovative and they're not going to be disruptive. They're going to be what I call imitators. So you always want to innovate, not imitate your competitors. So again, where do you start? Start from the top. It's someone with a vision. And that vision is to be best in class. I'm sure most people that I come to and the brands that I work with, most of them are not best in class. They're not best of breed. So they have a model to follow. The thing they don't understand is the strategy around how to innovate. It goes beyond product. Most people say, I I ask the question, Well, what do you think it takes to be able to successfully execute an innovation strategy? Well, it's to have innovative product. It's to disrupt our category. That's great. But where you actually start is with a vision of what you want to be eventually. And secondly, it's having and committing to a culture of innovation. You know, you can say all you want about being innovative on product, but unless you commit to being innovative, you aren't going to do anything in your industry. So being it is earned, which it is, you know, starting is with that vision and defining that you want to be best in class. And that's built around a plan and a time frame of what point And what type of product do we want to have in the marketplace that allows us to achieve that status? So when I when I talk about this again, it's not just product, it's culture and culture is a big term inside of a company. But culture is effectively what builds passion inside of a company, the passion to be best in class, the passion to have the tools to succeed and not having somebody look over your shoulder all the time. So all of these pieces of the puzzle are integral, integral to a company being innovative, disruptive, and then as a result of that, best in class. And I am not talking about a one hit wonder. And what I mean by that is always think about the pipeline of innovation. 
innovation through a one-hit wonder is not an innovative or disruptive company. It's just somebody who had a great idea. They're not innovative. You had a great idea, but you're not innovative. So being innovative and having a true strategy is building a pipeline of technology, processes, services, whatever it happens to be, and being able to migrate over that supply and demand chain and having a flow of innovation and products along that entire pipeline that allow you to go after the early adopters and the late adopters. So having a strategy on pipeline of innovation allows you to build incremental improvements, put it on the back end of the supply chain, and having new technologies where early adopters are willing to pay higher margin for better products because it's best in class. So there's a lot of different areas you need to look at here in order for you to be classified as innovative. And those that are generational by design are innovative because they built a pipeline of innovation that allows them to put product along that supply and demand chain. So, so when I look at this, there's several steps to initiate this strategy uh, vision of, of innovation. And when I look at most of them, then again, it's not all of them, but I kind of look at these top five. And for me, most of the brands I've been with, these global iconic brands that I've been with or I work for over the years, I've found this to be a common framework for those that are truly innovative and actually have disrupted the industry. And the first one I looked at was, I said, create and commit to a vision of being the leader in your category. And, and I say that as number one because the word create and commit vision to being a leader in your category. And it's a simplistic term, but obviously it's something that translates easy to everybody that's in the four walls of your company. You're committing to being a leader in the industry through disruption and eliminating your competition. And that's really an attitude I've seen from disruptors is that they don't like where that current service is, that current technology is. They want to improve it, make it better for their community, give them a better lifestyle through products that you can provide. And as a result, leapfrogging over your competition through not only better product, but better service, and also providing more value to your customers. And that's a key component that many times is missed by brands is they don't see the opportunity to bring value to their community. They just build a product and assume that it'll be adopted without it making a lifestyle better for your community. So that's a component when you say number one is again, create and commit to a vision of being the leader in your industry, disrupt and eliminate your competition is a vision that you want to make sure that you have for your company and bleed that out through your entire team as well as the organization and the company as a whole. The second one that I've seen with those that are effectively implementing an innovation strategy is define the team and the expectations and ensure they have autonomy. But I will say with stop signs, with checkpoints along the way. You wanna make sure that if you have what you classify or think is a disruptive product, service, technology, whatever it happens to be, you wanna make sure that it's number one, the ability to commercialize it. Number two, to realize the vision of what you want that product to do for your consumer. And then number three, is there a market? Is it scalable? So. There's these financial pieces of the puzzle that need to go into being disruptive, being innovative. So I'm not saying that you just have them go off on their own and not be checked along the way. That's not what I'm saying. You need to make sure you have checkpoints for sure. But at the same time, failure is inevitable. But keep progressing forward, not backwards. And this oversight I'm talking about is people that understand, if you're going to manage design, understand design. Just as people with marketing 
if you're going to manage marketing, understand marketing. And I, and I say that people go, well, that's logical. It's, no, it's not logical. I've been inside of companies and brands that I work with when we're implementing this strategy. People that have no design experience or no ability to come in and gain the respect of the design team or the marketing team, whatever it happens to be from a functional perspective, that are all part of this piece of this puzzle that are going to allow you to implement and execute this innovation strategy that shouldn't be in the room. So make sure that you define the team and the expectations and ensuring they have autonomy, but with checkpoints. And I say, make sure you keep progressing forward, not backwards. I always say the term, I said, nobody's ever realized their destination walking backwards. So that's really what I'm talking about here. Make sure you're progressing forward, but have checkpoints along the way. That's number two. Number three is provide resources. And I always say this analogy, which it seems to work really well for companies when we put our strategy plan together, as I say, provide oxygen to reach your new heights. You know, don't leave your team marching to the summit of Everest without the proper resources to survive the trip. And it's a great analogy to what I see many times is you're going to tell them to reach for the summit of the mountain and not give them oxygen along the way. Just tell them to make the best of what they have. But what happens inevitably, they stop at point two, they stop at point three, not point five where the summit is because they don't have the proper resources. So make sure that if you have an expectation of disrupting and or innovating and you have the strategy in place and you have a vision to be best in class, give the team the proper resources. Give them oxygen to survive the summit. And number four is define the opportunity and the fit with your current brand positioning. And again, it may seem obvious to people, but it's not. When you look at it, they'll say, hey, we want to do this line extension. We think it's a new category opportunity. But when you look at the product and you look at the positioning and you look at the value provided to your community, it doesn't make any sense. So you want to make sure when you're defining the opportunity and fit with the culture and brand positioning. Ensure everyone on your Disruptive innovation team understands the brand positioning and most importantly, the vision and your culture. That's very, very important to the success of properly in a, implementing a innovation strategy and how to do it effectively through culture and brand positioning, whatever it may be. So define that opportunity and fit with your current brand positioning. Ensure, ensure Everybody on that team understands what the brand stands for and also the culture behind that brand so you don't destroy it along the way. Number five is what I say, get out of the way. You know, once you, once you have committed to the vision, you've defined your team, you've given them the proper resources, you've defined the opportunity fits within your brand positioning and culture. Just get out of the way. Disruption is a fast moving train. Get out of the way or get run over. So when you look at this opportunity, when you're, when you're implementing this innovation strategy, it's easier said than done. It takes a commitment to risk and embracing failure along the way. I wanted to thank you for listening to the Visionary Chronicles podcast and Hopefully you find the information that we put out each week very useful. And what we found through reviews and when we were originally putting together their visionary podcast was found both personal and professional um, advice as well as information those listening to the podcast were looking for. So we wanted to be unique in that way and hopefully you found that to be the case. And Appreciate the reviews that you've been sending in, and we would certainly appreciate you signing up for our newsletter as well, which is an expansion upon what you're seeing on or hearing on the, the Visionary Chronicles podcast. And you can find that at two locations. One is briansmeltzer.com, B-R-Y-A-N-S-M-E-L-T-Z-E-R.com, or our company site, liquidmindsite.com, L-I-Q-U-I-D-M-I-N-D, 
site, S-I-T-E dot com. So we would appreciate any reviews, additional reviews, comments you may have. Sign up for the newsletter and we look forward to talking with you next week.